Hadrian the Seventh is a story of a man who goes from layman to priesthood to the papacy in short order. And as the Pope makes many changes within the dogma of the church and um, is finally martyred. The play begins in this humble room where Frederick William Rofe is living his life as a writer. He has aspired to become a priest. He has been denied the priesthood over a period of 20 years, he has been kicked out of two colleges which he went to begin holy orders, and he has nothing left to do as a means of living but writing. You, uh, uh is very different from most parts you, you It certainly play. is. Uh, since I was in college, I've played funny little old men, people like Elwood P. Dowd, for example, in Harvey. And this is the first chance I've ever had to play a really dramatic part. For years as a director, I've helped people become dramatic, but I've never been able to do so myself. But this part was written for a guy like me, 40, aging, uh, losing hair, um, agile, small, and uh, nasty in the first, and then very powerful in the end. And it's a great deal of fun. Now what, what is this? Uh, this, this? This set uh, is in a small chapel, supposedly, although it's never named, the Sistine Chapel, because we talk about the frescoes on the wall. And there's one wonderful line about, wasn't it Mark Twain who said, that the Creator made Italy from designs by Michelangelo. And here, that scabby little man that we talked about in the first scene becomes the Pope. He is given the priesthood, and he goes immediately to Rome for the election of the new pontiff, and it becomes Frederick William Rove. And so he takes over. And a wonderful scene that takes place on this set uh, with this altar, which is in the Sistine Chapel. And all of a sudden, while he's waiting to see what the outcome of the college is, the doors open and a great procession takes place and this little man realizes that all these people that are around him, all these bishops and cardinals and high authorities in the church with their acolytes and are offering to him the papacy and he accepts with great verve because he is so happy to finally become somebody important. We have added and added to the riches, pomp, and power of the church. Yet everywhere there is great wealth alongside dire poverty. Strong nations brutally hold small ones to slavery. Above all, there are millions of people of goodwill who are looking to us for moral and spiritual leadership who get from us only dogmatic interpretations of canon law in return. If then we have so far failed in the spreading of Christ's gospel, let us try anew. Let us try the road of apostolic simplicity, the simplicity of Peter the fisherman. At least let us try. Your eminences have permission to retire.